finding the average rate of change on a function and we'll do the first one based on a graph and the second two will just be based on functions. So just keep in mind whenever you're finding the average rate of change it's just the slope formula because we're trying to figure out how what's the average change between two x values on this interval or over time. So if we think about average rate of change you can just think of it as the slope formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, now in this problem, your x1 and x2 are given here because we're saying the interval from negative 0.5 to 2, how much is y changing? Okay, so if I go here now over to my graph, because that's how I'm going to find out my y values, right? So for x1 is negative 0.5. Let's actually change this. So <clears throat> x1 is negative 0 0.5, and the y value down here is negative 6. And then in the next one, we're looking for x is 2. What's the y value? Well, here, x is 2, y is negative 2. All right, so that's my x1, y1. These are coordinate points, x2, y2. All right, so what we're really trying to do here is we're trying to figure out what's the slope of this line. Because this line is giving us the average that it changed over time. Because notice it was increasing and then it was decreasing. But it was increasing for longer than it was decreasing, which makes it a positive slope. So when we're finding that A, the average rate of change, it's equal to M or the slope of this, of this line. So it should be positive because it's going up. So let's go ahead and input our numbers to get our answer. So we're going to have y2 minus y1. So just be careful here. You're going to have negative 2 minus a negative 6. So that's actually going to become plus 6. And then you have x2 minus x1. So that's going to be 2 minus a negative 0 0.5. Okay, so negative 2 plus 6. Let's just write one more step here. And 2 plus 0 0.5 is going to leave me with 4 over... 2.5. Now, when you, whenever you have like a fraction like this with a decimal, I would just multiply both of these by 2 to get a proper, you know, so it's just a normal fraction. And so the average rate of change in this is 8 over 5. And that makes sense because if you look at the, the slope of this, yeah, it looks like about 8 fifths. Okay, on to the next one. So again, we talked about our given range here uh, or our interval is actually x1 and x2. So when we're just given a function that means we gotta go ahead and input that number. So I'm gonna go ahead and input f of negative 1 which is my x1 keep in mind and that's gonna give me y1 so let's go ahead and input it we're gonna get so here we're gonna get negative 4 because the negative 1 squared will turn back positive and then minus 2 so we get negative 6 and remember that's my y1 okay and then we got f of 3 it's gonna be my x2 and we input that we're gonna get negative 4 times 3 squared plus 2 times 3 well that's gonna be negative 4 times 9, right? Always square it first. So 3 squared is 9 times negative 4 is negative 36 plus 6 equals negative 30 and that's going to be my y2. Okay, so now I have all my information here. You could write it out as coordinate points if you want, but I'm going to go ahead and put it into my function now. Remember I know that ARLC from the top here is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is negative 30 uh, minus a negative 6, right? So that's really going to turn into plus 6. And then we have on the bottom, we just have x2 is 3 minus a negative 1. All right, so we're going to go ahead and simplify this. We got negative 30 plus 6 because then minus a negative, 3 plus 1 is going to give us negative 24 over 4 and actually that's equal to negative 24 divided by 4 is just equal to negative 6. 
So our average rate of change on the interval from negative 1 to 3 is going to be negative 6. Okay, let's do the last one here. So we're going to have one last one here, and we're going to use an exponential function. So we have 3 to the x minus 4. All right, so again, we got our x1 and y1, or sorry, x1 and x2, <laughs> x1 and x2 right here. So x1 and x2, I'm going to go ahead and input 0, my x1. And remember, 3 to the 0 is just equal to 1. So that's 1 minus 4. So that equals negative 3. So that is going to be my y1. Now I need to input 3. And I'm going to get 3 cubed. Be careful there. Make sure you cube it. 3 cubed is 27 minus 4, and that is equal to 23, and that is going to be my y2. Okay, so I input, and I got all my information now, and now I can go ahead and input this into the average rate of change or slope formula, same thing. y2 minus y1 is going to be 23 minus a negative 3. And that is going to be over 3 minus 0. So that's going to give me 26, actually. 26 over 3. And you look at this and you see if you can divide anything out. But um, you can't divide 3 out of 26. So you can just leave your fraction like this. Your answer would be 26 over 3 on the interval from 0 to 3 for x in this function.